Now entering Nerdist.com. Jackie Cation, Laurie Kilmartin. Jackie Cation, Laurie Kilmartin. It's the Jackie and Laurie Show. The Jackie and Laurie Show. It's the Jackie and Laurie Show. The Jackie and Laurie Show. Oh. <laughs> God. I never know how you're going to start this show, Laurie Kilmartin. It's getting worse and worse. Every week I, I'm... I'm calling out to you from a deeper and deeper well of despair and <laughs> I've offered to take your mother to lunch. I've offered to take your mother to lunch. Take her, take her to lunch at a cemetery and push her <laughs> in an open grave. I'm going to take her to lunch. She's going to get to meet Bill O'Reilly. It's going to change her life. I can't take this the nagging and the lack of privacy. I don't know I don't know what how do to you explain it. What are you doing now? What are you doing now? What do you mean? Oh, is yes. It, is that, yeah, is no, that she, what it is? Did you move your car? I said I would rather get a fucking ticket than have you ask me again if I move my car. I'm I'm a grown up. I can handle it. Right. And then storms off. By the way, she can't walk any other. You know, anytime I she needs something, I have to get up and get it. But she can storm off when she's if pouting. She's got rage. Yeah. Fair enough. And well, make it to the bedroom. Clomp clomp. Oh, you're not shuffling your shoes now, are you? Clomp 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 clomp. All right, we got a present. We did. Why we were we? fan We're wonderful. Mail. I hope it's not anthrax. <laughs> oh my god, it's from. Uh, should we? Maybe we should just say. first name and the town. Anna from, from Vermont. There we go. Oh, from Vermont. Oh, oh Burlington, my god. I Vermont? hope it's not maxi pads. Oh my god. <laughs> I'll never. If I can call that back forever, I will. Uh, I sense wow. that you will. Oh, we've got an art. Oh my gosh. And a note. What's the note? Wait. There's a note. Okay. It's they're really cool cards and drawings. Well, um, good for you, Anna. And, in Vermont. and it says coping mechanisms. I, oh my god, this might be for you exactly. <laughs> oh my god. Printed at the Center for Cartoon Studies. Um, Jackie and Lori, maybe, depending if she's interested. <laughs> it doesn't I guess say that. You're more approachable than I am. <laughs> I must be, especially I'm, when it comes to comics. I must come off as a raging bitch. <laughs> Thank you so much for all the hours of free. Uh, I paid. Uh, don't worry. Mm-hmm. I own your albums. Entertainment. You made okay. Monday mornings awesome. Oh, that's really sweet. Oh, my gosh. My dear friend and fellow cartoonist, Anna Selheim, hipped me to the Jackie and Lori show. Big fan. I heard you guys talk about EMDR on the podcast. Nope. Uh, that was oh, the Dork Forest. I talked about that Did one. you talk about EMDR Yeah, one time? I okay. did. Okay. Do you have that as well? Because um, I think it was... It- I'd done it before because, um, you know, my swim coach is in serving is 40 it- years for uh, child molestation. No. Yeah. Wait that, a minute. That sort of fucked me up a teeny bit. Oh, Jesus um, age Christ. But I wasn't one of the... Here, I wasn't one of the official molested. I was like a ter, you know, a tertiary, tertiary victim or whatever. I was a Jane Doe in the case, but I wasn't uh, like, you know, I don't want anyone there. They're, you've suffered, about but you haven't well, suffered as yes, much. And I Is do, that what you'd not, like to? Yes. I would not want to, you know, say, oh, because I know the girls who actually did suffer. And it's right. like, I don't even you want You don't want to steal their thunder. No. And like they're you, horrifying, horrifying. Horrible, horrible thunder. thunder. The worst thunder ever. Yeah. <laughs> right. But anyway, yeah. So that really helped me. But I, I think I may have mentioned it very quickly. On yeah, it. I think, or or not. Or just in when we were talking in real life, which we used to do. Ugh, no. <laughs> it's over. If, if, it's if over the Kyle talking. isn't here to laugh occasionally in the background, <laughs> not all the time. He withholds. Oh, yeah. yeah it better be withholder. funny. It better be funny. So, but that was very nice. Now That's we have super comics. sweet. Yeah. And, and some of it seems to be like emotional support stuff. Yeah. I really Which you like could it. use. Thank you. Yeah. yeah that'll, that, that can't hurt. That's really cool. Thank you, Anna. Yeah. From Vermont. Um, there we are. So hey, I, did you notice that last episode I pronounced, uh, I, I said Carmen Lynch instead of Carmen Morales? Oh, you did say Carmen Lynch. I was like, I can't believe Carmen Lynch is emceeing for flappers She's out in Claremont. Yeah. But, but Carmen I, Morales, what a coup. very nice. What a but coup it, for cla- an, flappers. It would have been an amazing coup for flappers because Carmen Lynch is hilarious. <laughs> and Carmen Morales is very funny, too. And she yeah. emceed and she just moved here. So needs stage time. So oh, she sure. was like, yeah, I'll host. Yeah. I'll host the uh, show with... Um, so I did a disclaimer after you left the other day. Oh, okay. I came back up and I said to Kyle, hey, can we loop in me saying Morales over Lynch? And he was like, or you could just tape a, a disclaimer before the show. And I was like, or we could just do that. 
And wow. So that's I, what we did. I Good for you. You Kyle. guys are both so legal on, on top of it. And I, I we were supposed to be here yesterday and I totally forgot. And I feel right. I was psyched you forgot. It wasn't like something. No, like you, you both came you here in, foot. in rush hour. And yeah. like and what also angers me is that when I call to say, oh, my God, I fucking forgot. You guys were like, ah, no biggie. And I hear Kyle laughing in the background and I'm like. <laughs> Just so you know, if you guys forget and I come here, I will be filled with rage. And I will not laugh, and it won't be cute, and I won't remember that time that I did it. Now we're even. I'll be like those fucking assholes. So I was on Barham. Well, okay? I come down on Barham. So, so the fact that you didn't make self. me feel shitty made me angry. So well, I, I did bring does muffins. Does it help at all that I'm paying for an Uber for my friend because now I can't drive her to the airport? Because of this? Yeah. It does. There you go. Does that make you feel better? There you go. <laughs> oh, I'll I'll pay for it. There you go. There you go. I'll take it. <laughs> How hilarious would it Wait, be if I just took her to money? Say no. I know. I don't think you understand. I'm That's, Armenian. We aren't friends. I am Armenian. We aren't friends. <laughs> just so everyone. Knows. What you should know is that the bigger, the better a friend you are, the more able I am to take your money. <laughs> Strangers, I'm like, oh no, no, thank you. That's Let me true. get it. But friends, I'm like, no, yeah, pony up. I'll get half the Uber. <laughs> Your friend should have left by now. Jesus Christ. <laughs> she's been here we since Saturday. To, she's been here since Friday. Oh, my Saturday, God. Saturday, we went to Joffrey's in Malibu. I, I don't took know her what and it her is. husband. It's, a, oh, it's overlooking is the Is that a the, ballet? No, it's a, it's a restaurant that's uh, written out Jeffrey's. But because oh, it's. Oh, G E O F? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So right. fuck you, Malibu. And uh, <laughs> so, but the waiter, by the way, hilarious. He was, I because TJ's husband was in town. Uh, and so I took the two of them on Saturday. Who's TJ? TJ's my roommate from college. Oh, okay. Just oh, oh okay, okay. And uh, <laughs> she went to go get a glass of wine while we have a podcast. And then, um, but I took There's them- a couple TJs in the business. That's why I oh, thought yeah. you were assuming oh, some- we we're all. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, no. My friend, uh, TJ Ford. Okay. Who uh, okay. went to college with me. Okay. So, and her husband, we went to Joffrey's. And uh, that's it. what we did on Saturday day. Sunday, we went to the Getty. Before Tom flew well, home. Plus, you're headlining at, at Claremont that weekend. That's too many activities. It was so many fucking. You need activities. to rest. Not go to Guess Jeffrey's. What? You know what? Monday was uh, we went to fucking Disneyland. Which, by the way, uh, that's all. I'm only going to Disneyland with one other person who happens to be an adult and wants to overeat. That's all I want to do. <laughs> uh, yeah, because uh, what I want to do is I and we spent like five hours in in California Adventureland, which I've never spent that much time. It's usually just bleed over from Disneyland yeah. with Park Hopper. Disneyland was the bleed over, I which didn't. means I didn't get to go on some of the... I mean, I did go on the Matterhorn. It's a fascinating story. I'll stop talking about I it. Went, I went... I've never gone to Disneyland. And oh, if really? I can get through motherhood without going to any Disney property, oh, I will gosh. do a victory Does lap. the boy want to go ever? That's You know what? That's his fucking dad's job. Oh, there you go. All right. So they can go, and you don't yeah. have to. Okay, I had, we had a really good time, and it was great. We didn't we didn't even overeat. We just ate only crap. Hmm. I had a Darth by chocolate for dinner, which was a red velvet ganache chocolate pudding What's with ganache. A, ganache is uh, more chocolate pudding. It seems to there was something different between the ganache and the pudding. Uh-huh. A ganache being a chocolate solid, more of a solid. A pudding being a pudding, and then a red velvet, and, and then a dark chocolate. Uh, figure of Darth Vader on the top with a lightsaber. So now I know why you're not diving into my banana nuff- muffins oh, yeah. I got you. Yeah. With, when, when, when you hang out with TJ, she's a sugar nut. Mm. So I have already had a root beer float today, but I appreciate those muffins. Thank mm-hmm. you very much. Anyway, uh, so I'm exhausted and I've, I've had a lot of social stuff, but I, the show's Too at Flappers. Too much social stuff. Did you have sets this weekend? Yeah, I, I, uh, I was at, um, I did a Jimmy Pardo show at the Improv. Oh, and Jimmy Wayne, Pardo it was and really Friends? cool. Yeah. Wayne Fetterman played the piano and they just kind of messed around. Rift. Funny. Yeah, super yeah, funny. I bet. Uh, that was a fun show. And then. Uh, main room or the lab? The main room. And then I did a 10 o'clock at the lab. And then I did a Tammy Joe show at the store. It was oh, a nice. pretty. That was a nice night. It was a nice Saturday night in LA. It's two improvs in the store. Oh, my God. That is nice. Yeah. Although I'm not like a paid regular at the store. I, no. I, I do Tammy No, it turns show. out. Right. You do. <laughs> we both only do the ones where they're booked but it's, as you an know, outside it's source. Still such a, it's a great room. I love it. Which room did you do? The, one? Uh, the belly. Oh, the belly. Belly room. room. Belly yeah. room is when, when there's 20 people in there, it's full. Yeah. It's great. It's amazing. Guess what? Flappers, Claremont, had like 40, 50 people. Here's what happened second show Saturday, though. Babies. Somebody, two people, two different separate tables. Separate mothers. Uh, separate mothers brought their fucking infants. 
to the second show Saturday. Uh, they knew each other, the two tables. Oh. So they each brought their fucking baby instead of leaving their baby with one of them and then all of the adults going out. That's horrible. It was, uh, Augie Smith did probably 15, 20 minutes of just how he had a baby and he never brings it to people's work. Yeah. And uh, he just doesn't do it. He just doesn't bring his baby to work. Um, it's weird. Like as a comic, I'm like, you've, you've fuck that fuck you you're yeah. you're making the show about you mm-hmm. it's like a bachelorette party you want the show to be about you because you know when you bring your babies everyone's got to pay attention to the babies including the comedians so you're trying to direct the show so the fuck you babies in the back of the room they were crying that's why there was trouble with the babies sure <laughs> but as a mother who likes to fuck people's lives up with a child <laughs> i'm like yes ruin their lives <laughs> ruin the show like show i get them. it do you yeah, get it you'll you get feel my happened? pain okay Fair enough. No, but I'm uh, more comic than mother, and that's awful. Were they, were they were they removed at all? No. No, they left five minutes before because the babies had to get their cars out of L.A. I have no idea why they left early, but uh, they had to get the babies. The babies had to go. So they left five minutes before. You know you know my big closing bit where I do a series of dick jokes and then sparklers yeah. come out of my ass? Yes. They missed it. They missed it. I understand. <laughs> Well, those babies will grow up. Those and babies you'll will grow still be up. doing that closer. <laughs> right. Why you know, would I write a new closer you, you know, when you can get sparklers? You don't, when you got a close when you got a dick joke closer, you don't give that up for anything. Nope. It that it hits multi generations of a family. You're gonna get the you're gonna get a grandpa, you're gonna get the You know what I was told early on. I was told early on, you know, as long as people have dicks, people will always laugh at dicks. Yeah. No one's ever told me that. Anyway, but it is a truism and let's uh, stitch it on a pillow. I, I okay. So then Sunday, no, I did. did you Sunday? I went to the uh, Foreign Legion. Do you, you know that building no. on uh, on? It, I guess it's a uh, Coenga. Um, it's the Foreign Legion. It's right next to the Hollywood Bowl, and it, it's always kind of closed off. Oh yeah. Well, it's an active Foreign Legion, and they had a show there. Uh, so I did. I did a little set there. Allow um, me to stereotypically say, who books that? Uh, what, Anna uh, Hussein. Okay. Uh, oh, good. Uh, yeah. So uh, it was fun. It was like a bar show, but then I got I kind of got a good read on a joke. I'm like, oh, maybe I'll try it that way. So, uh, but prior to that, I was taping a web series mm-hmm. uh, during okay. the day, all, all day on Sunday. Not all day, like like I had to be there at three o'clock. I had to be there <laughs> Sunday morning at three o'clock. And um, so, female director, which is really cool. That's neat. You know, yeah. um, like why aren't you on a feature? I, like you're uh, okay, whatever. Yeah. But. Um, you were acting? Did well, you get I was act? acting. There, I had two scenes, and one of them, um, I was supposed to be a mother that was fighting with the kid, and I fucking nailed every take, <laughs> every bit of that. Every and, beat. and I'm begging the kid to kill me because the kid's suicidal, and I okay. put the gun in my head. I'm like, do it, you know? Yeah. In, in it, I gave the, I gave them so many options. The <laughs> Edit Bay is going to be crazy when they see all my options. The other one, I'm supposed to be sexually aroused, and uh, I. It's been so long and my life is so, yeah, I'm like, I don't, (laughs) I can't summon those feelings. I only exist um, from my rage up. Oh, interesting. Interesting. It Mm. it was, I was like, yeah, I don't know what that feels like anymore. I've just ignored that part of me while I've been trying to grapple with this other shit. I don't know. So you don't, you don't have any. No, and I don't even have any new sex jokes because I write about what's happening in my life. Like all my sex jokes are... They f- if it feels like they were written in another language by you know if I write a sex joke it means that I'm in an amazingly good mood I know you have you're ha- having tantric sex that tantric sex joke is actually working really well I bet it's I'm crushing pretty, it's it's doing pretty good not only is your joke working but you're actually having tantric sex <laughs> which it might be tantric sex we don't know we don't know if it's tantric upset. sex because I haven't looked it up is that actually tantric like sex it. we don't know it does sound like something the tantric would do yeah you, you you've been to tantric yeah haven't Anyway, I'm just over here. I've been hanging out with people who do puns, Lori Kilmartin. But then... Uh, talk about wanting to eat a bullet. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> so so before before this weekend, I had two weeks in a row where I, I was doing I was doing shows Tuesday through Sunday. Yeah. Six nights a week. That's awesome. Which is... Uh, it is awesome, but it's exhausting. Yeah. And I wasn't hanging out with my kid. And it's like, do you have a show tonight? And I, even mm-hmm. after a, a couple of days, I was like, I was feeling brokenhearted. Like, yeah. I have yeah, I got to hit that. So I've had the last two nights where I've just kind of... You know, snuggled, with the snuggled up, and this will be another one. But uh, at That's the great. meantime, I've had no outlet, no valve, and I have my mother pressing down on me. Like, like if I don't take any time off, I'm exhausted. If I take two nights off, I 
I want to strangle an old woman. Right, and old, which is n- never acceptable. <laughs> I'll say this, though. You know what? So, find a jury that would convict <laughs> me. You won't. you won't. I have to say that I have been working on this because I have to get this this set this chunk together that I'm working on, and it's all essentially about my dad, and it's it's about my stepmom dying and my dad almost dying, mm-hmm. and then there's part of it about my biological mother dying, and so I get off stage, and what do I get from uh, both T.J. Ford and Andy Ashcraft, two people I love dearly, but it was a little depressing. <laughs> And I was like, hey, uh, guess what, Peanut Gallery? I don't. There's punchlines in there, and there will be more if you fucking let me work on it. Yeah. And, are they new to the process? Uh, I take it they are. And I'm like, I'm going to fucking kill both of you because, yeah. yeah it's that's a, why you have your dick joke closer. That's right. So that's you can bring the audience down about I mix it up. multiple deaths. Exactly. I've, I've got what is clearly a 17-minute death chunk, which should be... A nine you'll get minute. it down to. It'll be nine minutes. You get it down to four. Fucking. Well, it's it's three. Joke, 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 joke. It should be It'll three be three, three minutes. Ch- it should be three three minute chunks. Each, is what it each should be. parent gets three minutes. Yes. Or that's what. Or that's what, really what like my dead mom gets. Is. I think forty five seconds to a minute. You know, she was killed on a Harley. We're proud. But uh, <laughs> so it's just it's tight. She's excuse me. She just got even more awesome to me. <laughs> oh yeah. She's yeah. like is she like Gemma from Sons of Anarchy or something? <laughs> uh. I don't know. I never yeah. saw that show, but uh, um, I can't. I can't watch things that might be more documentary. Like I was never right. able to watch Arrested Development. I couldn't watch Arrested Development because it reminded me of my dad. The sales, right? Yeah, I was like, oh, that's. I know there's money in the banana stand, and then you burned it down, and now I want to cry. And so I, I'm. Tr- I wasn't listening to you. I was trying to think of a. <laughs> that's why I can't watch insert show here, and yeah. I just couldn't think of a good a one. show that you can't. Because it's a documentary about my life. I was, I was just running. I don't I know. Trying, you trying. know what? I've been drained of all comedy. Of in, all comedy. In two days. But Well, that's because you need you need to write. You need to. What do you do for writing? Plus. Are there writing things that you do? Like no, other... but also this week, um, we're not taping shows this week. So mm-hmm. we're, we're coming in the office, but we're working on like larger pieces. Which, okay. So I'm not in my usual routine of writing like 30 or 40 monologue jokes a day. Right. So that that's it's all been taken away from me. <laughs> I, I do not handle change very well, and I don't have, handle disruption in my routine very well. For, right. For some, for a comic, you know, we're supposedly outlaws or something like that. Right. One it's thing true. you flips, should be more I'm like, able. This isn't. This isn't what I'm used feel to. Good. I don't enjoy it. Well, I'm looking forward to because now this will go up Monday, and I will have already done these shows. But I'm doing shows with Maria this weekend, and both of them I'm going to do essentially 25 minute sets, and I want to just do all stuff that I've ne- that have never been recorded. Cool. So just work on essentially work on 50 minutes. Wow. That's... And do two different sets oh, if I can. That's so sweet. Why but... do you think she'll let people come back? To both shows? No, no, I, I don't care. Uh, yeah, it doesn't have anything to do with me. The audience is fine. Uh, yeah. they, uh, I'm just exactly. I, I'm, a, I'm a placeholder. Yeah, uh, they're there to see Maria Bamford, <laughs> and uh, so I can do whatever I want. And they're the nicest people in the world. Yeah, because they're Maria Bamford fans. Yeah, and so um, I can I can do my weird, depressing twenty minute chunk and bookend it. Yeah, with, sure. uh, with happy, happy, that's joyous, what you do, and free. Man. Yeah, that's what you do. That's that's how you do stand-up and comedy, those, it turns out. Those depressing bits turn into bookends. And Themselves. then slowly they, everything gets pushed out. Out to the sides because they, they kill. And then you have new weird jokes that don't work as well in the middle. Yeah. That's how comedy works. Right. And then So I guess everyone should check out about minute 12 and come back in around minute 24. <laughs> Asshats. <laughs> Nobody's doing that. Anyway, Wait, what happened? so full of rage, so full oh, of rage I, that I just got feel felt. I feel better now, but you're full of rage. <laughs> I have a tiny bit of, of telepathic rage. connection. That's right what it is. You just, it's a baton you. handing, and you've handed me the baton this week. But then I'm home for like two weeks, and I'm doing only LA gigs. I'm doing a weird. I'm doing that Camarillo gig. At the oh, the one where I got banned for the, from? For yeah. the old, old people? Did you it's, get banned? It's the evangelical, uh, the, or evangelical Christians. Well, they're going to want to hear my 20 minutes on dead people. Yeah, they on are. On people, how people died and, and didn't die. Spoiler alert, some people don't die in the jokes. You some know, people live. Yeah. Yeah. So look forward to that, as long, if you As long as you have some sort of heaven tag, <laughs> you'll be good. No, I, I can't imagine. But and have you ever done Yellammered? Yes. Yellammered? Mm-hmm. It's Yellahammered. in Alabama. Yellahammered. 
Yeah. Yellow hammered. Yeah. I like to call it yellow hammered. No, I don't. Uh, <laughs> Kyle likes to, it is yell. Yellow hammered. Yellow hammered. It's the Alabama guys. Yeah. So they're like, we're going to make something that's been dipped in something and fried. And you're like, well, I just want stage time. Is that all right? I'm going to eat a sandwich <laughs> I before I come. <laughs> I know. I, I got, uh, I'm going to doing Bridgetown in Portland and I got, I got like all my shows. And oh I'm yeah. Like, and they're. You know, there there's not 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 a single one of the the three were like a straight stand up show. Oh, all themed. Yeah. Okay. And so I said, "This is cool. Is there it any is way cool. I could do Just any regular stand up?" <laughs> At the stand-up. Anybody say? Anybody say yes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She said, "Yeah, hey, don't worry. We'll we'll get you." But we'll, oh, that's good. Yeah. Well, I'm doing. Uh, I'm going to Indiana to do. Uh, uh, I'm doing Jokers in Indianapolis, but I'm also doing Popcom. I didn't know there was a Jokers in Indianapolis. It's Is it new? new? Yeah, it's new. It's the guy who used to run Crackers. Oh, he opened did they a, he break? A, a, did they yeah, have they a break up? And, oh. and I'm sure Ruth Ann is furious with me for taking Jokers. But I asked her for two years in a row if I could do the week of Gen Con, which uh-huh. is a board game convention that Andy oh, Ashcraft would Jesus. love to go to. And I don't want to pay a $1,000 for right. a hotel. Right. And it saves money and it uh, two two stones, one, whatever. Yeah. One bird yeah. killing two stones. Believe, I bet you're the only comic who requested that week because And of why that. wouldn't you say yes then? Right. I, and she did not. So this did guy she just ignore you? She said no. Well, she ignored me. Did she she ignored have a book already? Nope. She, she ignored me. She ignored me. And then she said no. Hmm. And then... So the Joker's guy said, hey, do you want to come for PopCon? And I said, sure. And then he got me a live Dork Forest at PopCon. And um, so I'm going to do a live Dork Forest at this convention. That's great. And then I'm going to do stand-up all week. And it's going to be amazing. Oh, that'll be awesome. And then I also get Did... to go to Montreal to open for Maria. Oh, and so cool. I get to do a live Dork Forest at Montreal. That's great. Which is amazing. Who, who are you? Who's your guest then? Well, at, in, at the Indiana thing, I might get this amazing comic book writer named Mark Wade, yeah. who I'm a huge fan of. Yeah. And uh, at Montreal, I'm sure it'll be, I don't know, someone, some comic. Yeah. I assume. But they don't, they haven't offered me anyone yet. So. Could you get somebody from Masters, JFL Masters, which mm-hmm. that's always the old hoary olds. It's been oh, around right. a while. And then right, get right. somebody from New Faces and have Just the to... Masters person explain to the New Faces person that the <laughs> development deal is going to go to shit <laughs> and nothing will happen. Right. So buy land. Is uh, what, what I always <laughs> yes. want someone who's what I always want is the older comic to say to the younger comic, take ten percent of every check you get, all yeah. cash, just spend it, spend it like it's water. All ca- all checks you get, just put ten percent of it. You won't even notice, yeah, because you'll get a check for fifty dollars. So you'll put five dollars in your savings account, and then three months from now, when you're like, oh shit, I don't have any work, you'll have four hundred and fifty dollars in your savings account that you can then drain, mm-hmm. and that's how that's how I lived forever. Wow. And that's very disciplined. Well, I, I am a depression wife. I don't know if you know this, but uh, right. I, uh, I, like to, uh, I like to fold up tin foil and stick it in a drawer. And I like to save bread You know bags. what? I got a third mother for you. <laughs> She's living with me. And I kill them. So uh, <laughs> you are. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. You and Andy. I will have a Comic-Con at my house if you and Andy will stay there for free and take care of this for oh, me. Wait, so the first Mother's Day. After my mother, my stepmother died. Yeah, my dad goes. I, I'm home visiting him because he's almost dying himself, and he goes, "Hey, is Mother's Day this weekend?" Oh, that's right. You don't need to know. <laughs> Elliot Cation. Oh my God, not good at this is what I said to him. You are not good at this, <laughs> and he was like, "I'm sorry, I forgot." Oh, and wow. I was like, oh, "Yes, you forgot that Nancy Cation, the woman who raised your children for 25 years, died." Seven months ago, you jackass. <laughs> and he's like, all right, all right, I get it. And uh, and then we had to let it go. Because he's not good with feelings. He is, he is not. He um, He's no, uh, I, I played Joke Machine with uh, Laura House this, this week. What's and that? we're Joke Machine is when you do them at, uh, Murray, Murray and I kind of invented it. All, all it means is that I do it, my, a joke I'm working at, yeah. at you. Like we literally sit across from a table and yeah. I tell you a joke I'm working on mm-hmm. and you tell you sort of you free associate on it. You're yeah. like, well, what, how, you know, and, and you could think of different angles to come at the joke. C- yeah. From it. yeah. Yeah. The only rule of joke machine is you cannot say, why would you joke about that? <laughs> Which, of course, is I mean, I'd 
the so rule came up because... to me like a conversation. Well, it's a, but it isn't because you know how with stand-ups you're not supposed to do material at each other. Right, right. So you have to warn people. Oh, right. In but if, conversation. Okay, so all right, yeah. you've, you've you've codified something that yes. could be just said. Hey, can I try a joke out? on Yes, you? exactly. Okay. We've all codified right. it. We've scheduled it. We're sitting down. We both have coffee. Okay, things are happening. Right, and then Marie and I have actually gone to the point where we do twenty minute chunks at each other. Wow, we did that for three hours. That's one day. really cool. It was one of the it was one of the best shows I've ever had that night <laughs> because I never practice my act. She practices her act. Yeah. What yeah. do you mean she she like by herself? Yeah. 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 I kind of talk to myself when I'm in the shower and stuff like that. I'll talk to myself when I drive just to sort of run how the words sound. Yeah. But I'll only do like one joke. Yeah. Like I won't run what I'm like working a chunk. I won't right. run a 15 or half an Unless hour chunk. Unless your headline, you haven't done the material in a while. Oh. Then I... Yeah, I was home for so long last yeah, summer. I had to listen to my own albums. Yeah, that's humiliating, isn't it? It was humiliating. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't like it, quite honestly. I didn't like it at all. I was like, yeah, that's that joke, all right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. What else? I don't know. Then I Are got, you going I, up next week? Yeah, I think I have a regular amount of spots next week. I'm back to my old self. Which but is I, just two or three? or hmm? Is it just two or three instead of six? I can't remember. Okay. I I, I try not to look until day oh, of. Oh, until day of. Just living yeah. in the moment? Yeah, I live that's in the moment. Like. That's what you're like. That's what you're like, Larry Kilmartin. <laughs> but, um, uh, yeah. I when when is Bridgetown? It's like in two weeks, I guess. Oh, really? Yeah. I hope well, I'm ready awesome. for it. I was going to take that that uh, weekend before off. It's uh, Memorial Day weekend. Okay. And take my kids someplace. Yeah. Just me and him so we could finish reading like a Percy Jackson book. Just get through it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but then I'm right. like, oh, I don't want to take too much time off before a festival. <laughs> oh, right. Well, it's... But where would you... I mean, what do you... Oh, you were going to take them, like, for a weekend? Yeah. Up to Morrow Hat Rock or something? You know something, what? Or... Up to Glendale. We oh. live in Burbank. It's a big... <laughs> I don't know. I always have, like, big plans, and then I'm like, mm. oh, you know, I could just go up to the mall and go right, to the we'll arcade. Just He's just as happy there. He's happy. Who doesn't want that? People take... You know, it's... Um, it's it, you travel so much that when you're home, you don't want to you don't want to travel unless you have a gig attached to it. Yeah, you know? I've driven... I've driven I this freaking weekend, man. I must have driven seven hundred miles with up to Malibu and then down to fucking fuck fuck. Yeah. I'm like, are you kidding me? I don't want to go anywhere. And so today she was like, Oh, a friend of mine, a hairdresser friend of mine I went to high school with now lives in Beverly Hills at a fancy salon there. I want to go to lunch. Do you want to go to lunch with us? And I was like, In Beverly Hills? No. No, Mm-mm. I don't. From Van Nuys? I yeah. do not. No. And she was like, Oh, can I take the bus there? And I said The bus <laughs> Yep. Where, wait, where does she live? We, she's staying with me in Van Nuys. I know, but why? Why? Why did the bus? Why come did up? she think of the bus? Because was an she option. lives in Portland, Oregon. Oh, of course. And so yeah. she uh, is a huge. I was like, she kept saying things, hilarious things about Los Angeles. Like, oh, is that how famous people are? There going to be famous people there? Is this how famous? Is there going to be a like? She said, for Maria had her premiere the other night. Yeah. And she said, is there going to be a red carpet with a paparazzi? And I said, she's in Catherine Hepburn. Uh, there might. I mean. She's what? She's not no. Catherine Hepburn. It isn't 1947. I don't know what you think. <laughs> why did you? Why did you go back to a reference from the Depression? Depression well, wife, <laughs> <laughs> Catherine Hepburn. Well, well, because the thing, it's like, I, you know, she thinks that Los Angeles is something out of an old movie. Yeah. From like, for, like a Fred Astaire movie, and so sure. I was like, for example, if someone were to say to you, "Do you have chickens? Do you kill them and then hang them and pluck them and then cook them?" Uh, and then do you also have a giant vegetable garden and a, a tall bicycle and play a mandolin? Because that's what I think of when I think of Portland, Oregon. <laughs> and she was like, no, I don't have any of those things. Mm. And I said, there you go. It's a caricature. That's not what Los Angeles is. I am. I was worried that I was I sounded too bitter last week. Oh, right. About about and I, the mom. And I texted you repeatedly. Yeah. Did, I did I, of, and I then you stopped panicked. replying to me. Yeah, I was done. I was done. <laughs> I didn't know how to. What was I going to say? I had said already. No, you were good. Again, your 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 bar is so low that why uh, I even go to you? The word you're looking for is sanity. The word <laughs> that you're looking for is uh, uh, my. Either, I mean, you can think of it as self absorption. You can. I'm. I'm okay. I, I'll. I'll cop to that. Okay. <laughs> but I have to say that uh, that the the yeah. I don't think. I think. 
I let, let's just say this for the record, Lori Kilmartin. Mm-hmm. I think you're a good person. Mm-hmm. I think you beat yourself up a little too much. And I think you like to beat yourself a little too much up. What do you think of that? I have to leave. <laughs> I just wanted you to go. I'd like to tell you to fuck <laughs> off is what I wanted you to say. But uh, no, I think um, no, because I think uh, I think you do. I think you're pretty you're pretty sane in the moment. And then mm-hmm. later you obsess. Yes. Yeah, but maybe no, maybe I'm insane in the moment. And then later I'm like, wait, what the fuck did I just rant go off on for 15 minutes? No, I think you make it bigger in the past All right. than it is. It, it's uh, you could you know what? Weirdly enough, hmm. these things are recorded. Yeah, you, <laughs> I've never listened to this show. <laughs> Nobody listens. I mean, the I, 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 are you, you can't insane? listen to your own podcast. It's, no. When I re, when I first started editing the Dork Forest, mm-hmm. the entire time I was just like, Jesus Christ, Jackie, shut up! Someone was trying to tell a story. <laughs> And you've said that more than once on this very podcast. I hey, think... I'm not done talking. <laughs> this is what you've said to me. Well, I appreciate you always trying to keep that ball in the air, Jackie. Don't let it bounce once. Nope. Nope. We gotta. I, I play hacky set. You ever play hacky set? No. No. Nope. I can't imagine. I, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> All these nasty insults. Well, no, you're you gonna swim. look at my comic books you I got swim. from our fr- our fam- from, from our family. Um, I don't swim because uh, you have a pool, don't you? Isn't there a pool at your house? There's a pool in my house. But yes. is it like kidney shaped? You can't really do laps. You can't really do laps in it. I don't. Do you it, like laps? Could I? Could I? <laughs> Oh my God! Are you trying to? Are you trying to be your own exhibit A? <laughs> if I am killed, go. I okay. No, I I have a block against swimming um, that I haven't. Yes, a mental block. Yeah. Uh, there's also swimming blocks. So yes, <laughs> right. that's a good. Okay. Your eyebrows yeah. went up for the right reason. Right. Okay. No, I I want to one day swim again. But yeah. it's not right now. Okay. Even though I moved to it next to a 50 meter pool and I have a pool in my house. Right. <laughs> but it's still some part of me is like, no, nah, not yet. Do you I, ever wade? Do hmm? you jump in the pool ever? I stick my toe in. I push you, my son in. I right? push a neighbor kid in. Right. <laughs> You'll, will you screw around the pool? I mean, I, you don't have to go in and, and do laps and, and make no, it an exercise part, thing. Parties, I go, it doesn't count if you're screwing around. You know, I have a lot of weird rules in my head that I'm, as I get older, I'm trying to extricate myself from and go, that doesn't make sense. And you don't have to follow that rule and it's not right or true. Right. But they're deeply ingrained. But they're there. So you've just like sort of what, recognized them? What counts as a workout? How many yards count as a workout? So if I do less than 3,000, it doesn't count. So why did I even get in? It just, like, I have that going on oh, in my wow. head a lot. That is a hell of a committee what, meeting. That, <laughs> that, that is... But apply that to, like, everything in comedy and stuff. And <laughs> right, right. It's um, You see, it can be problematic. Can you open being... your eyes? I bet you used to be able to open your eyes underwater. Huh? I wear contacts, so I don't open my eyes underwater. Okay. Did Dude. you always wear contacts? Uh, since I was 12, yeah. Okay. They float away. They float. I, uh, um... I never liked opening my ass underwater because I had an unsubstantiated belief that water would seep into my skull and it would all blow. That's I would blow terribly up. Terribly unsubstantiated. <laughs> that is unsubstantiated. <laughs> so what I would do is I would just swim around with my eyes closed and I would play Jacques Cousteau and then I'd eventually hit the side of the pool. It's a great story. I'm gonna. Did I may, you ever I may, wear goggles? Uh, I didn't have goggles. We were very poor. <laughs> we didn't have goggles. Wow. So. But you could open your eyes. I'm trying to remember how much goggles cost back then. I don't think they were that expensive. No, no. The thing is, is there was money. My father had like a pinky ring and a new car every year. The rest of us were sharing like three sweaters. Wow. I mean, it's like, and and if I were to tell him that now, he'd be like, well, why didn't you ask for goggles? And I'm like, I asked for a bike for three years, dad. You didn't fucking get me a bike. I even, and then when I got a free bike and I found out how to fix the flat tire, you were like, Good research, and then never fixed the flat tire. So then I had to wait until I was 16 to get a bike, which I got from these people that I babysat for, and it was a... Yeah, anyway. I'm, I'm going have... to send this podcast to your father. <laughs> oh, my God. He does a, He has a tape deck, so you'll have to somehow put it on cassette. I've been trying to. I have, like... Uh... <laughs> what? <laughs> I know. That was the saddest fucking story in the world. I mean, no harm. No, that should be it's another... It's all working out. Yeah, no. Do that on Saturday. Just put That's it between fan- Put jokes. it right between the death you got junk. Dick joke and then have bookends. everybody burst into tears and throw me quarters. Yeah. And they're like, please get a bike now. We're I'm like, a, I don't want we're, a bike. I think we're both in a terrible mood. I'm a... 
I'm just tired because I've been going all over the place. But tomorrow I fly away. This will have already happened, but I'm going to Charlotte and North Carolina and Nashville, Tennessee with yes. Maria this weekend. Right. And I'm really looking forward to doing long sets of all the stuff that isn't recorded. Mm-hmm. So that'll be fun. And I'm doing Meltdown tonight. I'm doing Fancy Pants Meltdown. Here That's at, cool. Here at the Nerdist. The Nerd Melt. I'm doing, I'm doing fun shows this weekend. You're doing what? I'm doing fun <laughs> shows this weekend. You're doing... Well, it certainly sounds like a good time. <laughs> I am. <laughs> I am. Ugh. What do you want to write comedy about? Is there something... Mm. Like, have you heard any good comedy that you're like, why don't I write that? Because I, I never think... You know how some, somebody tweeted at me last week. They said... You know, I was listening to that person. It made me so depressed because I'm like, I'll never be that good. Made me want to kill myself or stop doing comedy. I have never thought that. Whenever I've seen somebody do something really well, yeah, all I think is, oh, well, at least I recognize that that's being, being done well. Uh, I don't ever, th- I'm not jealous of it, but I'm also, I'm also like, well, I'm not, I'm not going to write jokes about that. Yeah. I guess we, it would depend on who you're talking about. I'm well, like when I first started, I, I, I didn't get inspired by male comics. I didn't see myself. Like I would remember going to the other cafe uh, in San Francisco uh, and enjoying it, like enjoying Bobby Slayton. Um, okay. But not connect, like not going, oh, I could do that. Who was the that. first comic you kind of saw and you were like, oh, well, that's It kind was of- Dana Carvey. I was oh, like, was that's it? kind of what I want to do. Well, like, I never, yeah. I'm not like him at all. Right. And, um, and then Bill Hicks, who I'm also not like at all. It's weird how your influences, you know, yeah, you, d- you end up not, you, we, there's people that sound exactly like their influences. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, and, uh, and, and by the way, work on that folks. Anyway. So well, it's a normal, it's a normal to go gro- through yeah, and then you got to get out of it. Yeah. I think I don't know. People, I think so. I think there's a lot of people that sta- sound like David Tell that have done really well, and they didn't bother. Same with Mitch Hedberg. Sounding. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Same with Mitch Hedberg. Yeah. But, but, yeah. There's no. But there's no reason to sort of. I mean, there's ways to make stuff your own. There's no reason well, to keep doing it. Mostly, when like you people. talk about your own life, is when you make it your own. Yes. Right. And yes. the very specific things that happen to you. So if it's all observational, I guess you don't ever get into it. But you could make observational stuff super personal too. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to just do like, cause you know, Mitch Hedberg, like he would do that, you know, those jokes about, you know, they were, they felt very observational and very sort of perspective. Like, they started like out from normal a distance. and then they would get incredibly surreal. Super it, surreal and super weird. Yeah. And, and it felt like inside his head, you yes. know? Yeah. And so if you start from those same places that he starts from mm-hmm. and then you go to your weird place in your head. Yes. Please do that. You it know? takes so long to find out your weird place in your head. Yeah. You know, like I, like now I feel like, um, I'm, I know my voice pretty well mm-hmm. and so I'm not, I'm not, I'm not like, Oh, am I funny or not? Like I, I was wondering if I was funny for like the first twenty years of stand up, oh, wow. you know. And I thought when I killed, it's because I got lucky or I figured out tricks. But I didn't feel like, oh, I intrinsically had funny bones. And now, now I'm maybe I think we talked you're, about this before because my kid and now maybe a little bit more my mother. But that thing where you're when you when you when your life puts you in a certain place and you have to, you've got to fight your way out of it with jokes. Right. Then you go, Oh, I really am funny <laughs> versus, you know, um, I, what, how I felt before about myself where I was sort of just commenting on life as I kind of skipped through it of my own volition, you know, when, so it didn't feel, so you didn't, you didn't know, you thought that it might've been a fluke when you killed. Oh yeah. I mean, interesting. I didn't think, you knew you I were good I was at what doing you did, an impression right? of a comic, kind of. Oh, interesting. But yeah, I wouldn't. But you knew you were good at what you were doing. Yeah, but I didn't. I still felt like a fraud, interesting. and it wasn't until really late that I. And that's why I'm like, you know, what? There's like younger female comics that are have like a sense of confidence that I'm like. Fuck! I did not have that till last week. <laughs> <laughs> they might be and faking I, it, though. They could be faking it, but like I don't think Amy Schumer's faking it. I think nope. she she has some kind of north star that she had really early on, and that, has a certainty. Yeah, that yeah. I'm like, gosh, I like I wish I'd have had that when I, re- I was younger. I remember in like '93, I saw Dana Gould, mm-hmm. and that was the first time that I ever saw someone. I was like, that. Yeah. Is sort of what I'm doing because it was about my life. Yeah. But it was about his life. Yeah. Right? The one of the first jokes I ever heard him do, and I'm reminded of him 
him of it about a couple of months ago when he had a very, very strong fan who came up to him yeah. and was just quoting his act. And, and he was getting more and more uncomfortable. And it <laughs> made me laugh so hard that I was like, hey, let me tell you about something I loved of yours in 1993. And uh, <laughs> what the hell? And, but it was this whole thing about going to Friendly's, uh, which is that Ice like a store. diner yeah, yeah, out in the East Coast. And how his dad would essentially wake up and how his dad was half in the bag when he would take him. And, and he described the uh, his dad opening a beer and every beer was like another bullet in a chamber of a oh bolt of a gun. Wow. So he'd go through a six pack and he'd be loaded ah. and then he'd take him to take him to friendlies and I'm not doing it justice. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then, but it was this, and this whole story about his dad with the fork. Yeah. And he was going to stab his hand and then his mom building a cross out in the parking lot because she's a martyr yeah. and hoisting herself up on it. Yeah. And it was just this one image after another of this childhood that you're like, that is both poignant and hilarious yeah. but also and 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 well visually, done yes yes visually there and then also you're like so specific mm-hmm. you're like and so smart and mm-hmm. these weird references to both classical like the benefits of a classical education are involved yeah. and the and going to church and having all this you know and pop culture references and i was like Oh, that's a whole joke. Yeah, that's the first that's time like I ever from saw from 360 a whole joke. degrees. If you look at that joke, it works. Yeah, from every 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 angle. angle. Yeah, top to bottom, to sides, and I was yeah. like, I want to do that. Yeah, and that's what I've been working at. And sometimes I get it, and sometimes I don't. And sometimes people say it's depressing, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I don't think that's not going to burn <gasps> for a couple of weeks. <laughs> anyway, well, I don't know what like what I'm trying to write about. Well, I'm yeah. writing about my mom and yeah. You ever write any jokes about your sister? No, she's safe. She's pretty. She's <laughs> she's, <laughs> she's living a pretty sweet, sweet life she without lives getting on jokes. A little safe island where I'm, she doesn't cause me grief. <laughs> <laughs> right, you don't have to fight have your no way through her. Reason to attack her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Laura House and I, we were both working on this great, like, and it was yesterday, so it was after the sad sack comments that I got. Yeah. And so Laura House had this great thing that she helped me out to make, to get, it got me in a couple of new punchlines. Oh, neat. A couple of new punchlines with my dad's stuff and, and the grief and the advice bit that I'm working on. Yeah. And then we went to work on her dad's stuff. Yeah. Because her dad is hilarious too you know and she has this stuff about about her dad stan house stan my favorite house. name ever stanley house yeah and uh grumposaurus rex man but full of love full of love that stan house mm-hmm. and uh so we were working on both of that and i love i love when there's there's like there's a big picture that you can come and look at it like with your mom you know Do- I i want more about like not what you're, not how, how you, I'm trying to kill her. Yeah, and how you're trying to kill her. But I wonder where, what are the things that bring you joy? Me? I would, yeah. Would, is there anything, does she ever make you laugh? Does she ever make you, like, what are the, a great story from the past that she's currently ruined by being still alive? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you're like, this was the most amazing thing when I was eight. And now look at you uh, with your shuffling. She, uh, she's not a joy person, you know. <laughs> it's you... really frustrating. My dad yeah. was always so upbeat. I was always my sister and I both were like, "Why?" She, <laughs> you know. Well, it's the opposites <sighs> attract sometimes. Yeah. With, yeah. The, with Isn't it strange? Interesting how, like, if you look at female comics in their thirties, they're all talking about sex, mm-hmm. you know, and dating and stuff like that. And then us, we're mm-hmm. like parents oh yeah you know because they're a hundred they're a hundred and, and and you're like tick tock yeah yeah but i you know what i don't think i i've i have like eight sex jokes now i used to have like six so it's been a good couple of years quite honestly <laughs> and uh <laughs> i can't wait to write sex jokes again. Right, right i will let you know i will call you it'll be it'll be the a first good, setup I you know have. it'll be a good sign It'll be a real good sign when you got a when you got a new sex joke, because I think it just means that you're in sort of a a comfortable place when you write when you write a joke that's like sort of weirdly personal like mm-hmm. that. That means that you're you've sort of unlocked in my head. 
I've unlocked you mean something personal in my head. Se- Whether, sometimes it's sex jokes with it that I've unlocked some sort of room in yeah. my brain. Yeah, and I've let the fuck go of something. Yeah, like a sex joke, like that. that like your LARPing thing. Is yeah, yeah, that sexual healing joke with the LARPing. That actually released a lot of. Hey, I got a weird email today. Uh, from some woman who didn't get my Allen Ginsberg Howell reference in one of my jokes. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I know I'm a million years old, but isn't Howell from Allen Ginsberg yeah. a classic? It's a classic poem. I've and, never read it, but I, I've well, read. You I would know recognize it's, it, it's, right? Oh, I'm aware it's the, of its the existence. The best minds of my generation. I know the title. Starving, naked, running naked through the Negro streets at dawn. And I do a reference, and I say, with money taped to my ass, uh, thinking to myself, what's going to happen? So I quote <laughs> the Howell joke in the in the Howell, the actual words from, the, impressive. from the poem. Well, I, I mashed it, and then I was like, well, if I'm going to do this, I should look it up. And then I memorized it, and then <gasps> I uh, put the punchline on the end of it. And um, what's funny is Hardwick once said to me, he said, is that, was there money taped to the, that guy's ass at the end of that? He didn't know it either. <laughs> and well, because he couldn't he's remember fucking, either. He's not a Latin nerd, honey. <laughs> right. Well, not you that know, you'd have to a, be, too. No, right. <laughs> and, <laughs> but the thing is, is the benefits of a classical education, he recognized the first three lines. <laughs> and, he, and it does sound like, because it was, because Allen Ginsberg was known to be both, uh, you know, incendiary and dirty. Yeah. And so he was like, might have, might have been. And I was like, yeah, no, that was that, that last bit's mine. And uh, so I get this, uh, this email from this woman going, uh, my friend and I found that really offensive and we won't be listening to you anymore. Why did you refer to it as the Negro streets? <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> shit. I didn't refer to it as the Negro streets. Allen Ginsberg did in 1955. You, 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 Idiot. I was I like, I would have Googled that before, before I, you, I got offended. Right. And before you, and then I would have got offended anyway. E- email. Oh my God. And then, and then she was like, you know, if I got this wrong, I'm sorry. And I'm like, yeah, you got it wrong. <laughs> and so I, e- I, I did not, there was no restraint of pen and tongue. I just emailed her back and I said, 1955 Allen Ginsberg, look it up. Nice. I was like, I just full of tiny, re- I mean, so clearly, uh, short-tempered cation is what uh, is what we're looking at today. STK, <laughs> short-tempered cation. The journey continues is what it is. I am not perfect. I know it's a surprise to everyone in this room mm. that I am not a beacon of hope and a gift to the to the humanity. I don't know what to write about. I really don't. Yeah, because I feel like I'm. I've gotten you know whatever. I'll finish these little chunk chunklets I'm working on, but then what? Now what? Well, what are you? Well, what are you reading? Are you reading? Are you reading self help? Right now, stuff I'm reading uh, Brian Kiley. Uh, Brian Kiley wrote a book called oh, the, the Misadventures of Rory Collins. Yeah, you... yeah, I'm reading it. Oh, yeah. that's cool. It's really good. Oh, good. Because um, he gave it to me, and I haven't read it. But I know. I, also... I didn't read it either for a long time. Uh, I just started it. It's good. It's really great. I have that. I have uh, Michelle gave me Patton's book months and months ago. Oh, the, the movie book. String, yeah, string. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I have um, Shrill. I have West. Shrill too. I'm getting through that too. Are you started? Yeah. Oh, good. It's good. I haven't, I yeah. haven't, I haven't started it. Yeah. And uh, um, and then uh, I just went to the Iliad bookstore over in Burbank and I bought some crap novels uh, for the plane. That's good. I I want to finish Shrill and Brian Kiley's book and then uh, then go back to my studies of rural Irish women in the <laughs> 1940s. Well. What uh, are there any great jokes about rural Irish women in the 1940s? You know, no. But here's here's <laughs> I was listening to. Uh, do you know I'm not going to say my Ireland, uh, Quidditch. T-shirt? I do. It's, yeah. it it needs to go to Goodwill, but it, I'm glad that you like it. <laughs> it's uh, uh, first of all, no. it was very expensive, so uh, it will not uh, be going to Goodwill. 400 years ago. <laughs> I don't know how old that thing is. <laughs> this is a. Uh, it's a couple of months. Okay. I just bought it at Harry Potter World. Wow. In Orlando. Did it? Is it supposed to be like yeah. distressed? Yes. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. All right. <laughs> Um, well, then you could keep it. Yeah, thank you. Um, but no, it's a fucking forty dollar t shirt. Yeah. Anyway, so okay, we can move on. Um, I don't necessarily want to talk about a book on stage. No, no, I was just thinking, you know, like, like the history of your family. Uh, you know, I, I, when I hear it, there's comics that I don't want to name names because they're famous or nice or something, but they do a lot of history stuff. Okay, you know, um, okay. I, saw, I was listening to Eddie Izzard. Yeah. And I was like, that's interesting, but I wasn't laughing. Okay. And now it's also could be because I was driving, I'm not in the audience, but I, I thought it was 
interesting. I have an amazing joke clever. about backgammon. History of backgammon. Not even kidding. Thank you. That's very pertinent to what I was saying. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it is. So you don't, but you didn't think that his history jokes were great. No, I thought they were interesting, but yeah. I, I was like, well, that's not, for me, that's not compelling enough to talk about on stage. Like, I, I feel like I I bled to get up on stage. I, I feel like a, like some kind of soldier where I, I went through a lot because I'm, I'm not a gregarious person. I don't like talking to people. I don't like looking in their eyes. So the fact that I make my living <laughs> doing that, <laughs> right. I had to go through a lot personally yeah. just to get on stage. And then I had to go through a lot to get decent, you know? Yeah. So... So when I to get all to get to that point, I'm like, well, I don't want to talk about Anything what I want to talk about. Real? It has to be as weighted as my journey there. That's how I feel now. You know, right? There's so much to talk about. I don't know. That, that's when I usually wait to get physically assaulted or something, and then <laughs> I have new shit. I have to wait for. I, that's always been like the thing of oh, I got to wait for a big thing. I, I have to have a kid. I have to do this or he goes through this phase or you know whatever right. but it's always got to be something that happens to me not me reading a book and then regurgitating it in a no, way no, that's I observational mean... of that book it's okay. not that's not interesting enough for me to talk about on stage but i you know okay. do you, but do you know what i mean what the thing is 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 uh is is if you've read a, an amazing book sometimes it can resonate and make you think about something in yes. your life yes that like with you, it's your Irish ancestry, right? I guess so. It's or and, it's just, but I don't yeah. know that it's big enough, right, to make you want to write something no. about it. No, or it isn't. So certainly isn't right now because it's not working. But I was trying to think of of other ways to jumpstart, like back part of your brains that you're not working. I mean, I don't right. want to right now. I am almost obsessed with politics. But I don't want to write any political jokes because, as per usual, and for the last 30 years, by the way, I've never – I've written probably a hand, as many political jokes as I've written sex jokes. Yeah. And it's because I don't want to write sex jokes and I don't want to write political jokes, but sometimes they just happen. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to write about politics because I'm too angry. I've always been angry yeah. about politics. And I have a degree in political science and it's – and I and I want to cite sources and I want to do these things that are not funny. So yeah. I d and no one deserves that. So uh, I, much like you, feel like I need to produce and make things. I, I want to connect with people and I want it to be personal and I don't want it to just be rage filled. Right. There has to be punchlines. There has to no, be. No, of course. It's, but it, the source of it is rage. Yeah. But yeah, it's got to have punchlines. That's what that's what I always go for. Yeah, we all I mean, we're all, yeah. all going for that. But I don't I don't like to write from that rage. Like some political comics write from that anger. And it works for them. I'm too angry to actually write punchlines, I would say, 99% of the time. Yeah. So I, that's why I don't even try. Yeah, political comedy is really tough because to get laughs, you do have to dumb it down enough to get a laugh. To get an, a laugh isn't an involuntary response. You know, people might go, hmm, that's interesting, <laughs> and they clap right. and stuff, but a laugh. Where, like a you, full -on... where you tricked somebody and yeah. you made a twist that they didn't see on that Donald Trump joke. Yep. You know, you you can't you can't be too hard. You, right. you have to go the silly. Nodding. And when you're when you're actually angry about you know certain policies and stuff, mm -hmm. it's hard to it's hard to go silly. You know. Yeah. And for me, you know, I again when I when I'm up on stage, I guess I just want want what I whatever I'm working on to feel valuable to me. Valuable in a way that it's personal, or yeah, value? okay, yeah, yeah, because you, you, it has to come through the the blood, yeah, for you. You're like I, 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 I'm wounded. I have to somehow fix it with comedy. Yes, is that what you're it's, doing? It's almost you get like a you get a rock, and you're like I got to make this into a joke, and you start chipping away, chipping okay. away at it like that. So yeah. the rock is whatever it is. It's it's, it's loss. It's, the, it's it's the pain. Yes, I interesting. Mean, don't you don't approach it like that? No, I I genuinely need to write the joke from a place of love, and a place of I know I love that look at your face. Even, a I, place I of joy. I don't understand that. Right. Well, and it's it's not, and it's I'm not doing it on purpose. Right. <laughs> right. But I have to like I have to figure out like a lot of my f dad jokes are because I'm mad at him, mm -hmm. but I have to find a way to love him. Yes. Oh no to, no. I, okay. I know what you're okay. saying. 
I don't I I don't think you're writing from a place of love. I think you're applying that filter to your feeling and cuz that's how you make you, you can distance yourself a little bit from it and make maybe a the joke rock about I'm it. chipping at has to find like it has to find the david inside the rock and that's the love because right now it's just a rock full of I'm really mad yeah. about what he did about bikes when I was a kid let's say yeah. and I'm like well how do we make that funny and interesting and not quite so full of rage cuz nobody wants to hear that sad sack fucking story without a joke at the end of it right yeah, we yeah. want jokes. Yeah, yeah, but it, I and I'm and I'm glad you know we have that pressure too, because it it you know and well, and I think because um, well, I think it can heal a lot of stuff too. Definitely. Yeah, because it bleeds off all of, a lot of. Yeah, and you hear people joking about something that's super painful real. that you yeah. haven't maybe untangled oh. yet, and you're like, whoa, you untangled it. Yeah, for yourself, it's not exactly the same, but. You found something in there. You mm-hmm. know, it's delightful. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's wonderful. And, right. And I like I've seen I've seen a lot of people do it. I mean, people it's uh, you know, who's really good at it is Louis C.K. Mm-hmm. Louis C.K. Yes. They, I, w- to listen to him talk about how his brain works and the horrible like horrible thought syndrome. He'll have yeah. these terrible thoughts. He'll talk about how he knows he's not supposed to act on them, And then he comes up with a place of. Of comedy, yeah. But then what it does is it sort of releases for the audience. Everyone's like, "Oh yeah, I have shitty thoughts too." Yeah, let's all not act on them. Yeah, and uh, so yeah. it kind of gives everyone permission to uh, "you're never alone" kind of thing. Bamford right. does it all the time as right. well. Yeah, right? totally. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's neat. Sarah Silverman. Sarah Silverman was one of the first people, I think. And tell me if I'm wrong here, where she did a lot of stuff about racism from a very that ironic place of racism. Yes, that a lot of people didn't get. They didn't get it. And people people can't duplicate it. Like, you know how yeah. like a lot of young comics were trying to duplicate what she was doing, but they weren't coming from the same place. Yeah. And it's 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 just not easy, you know? And it's No, it takes a huge amount of skill to and walk that guts. Line. I have seen yes. her and Zach Alphanakis try that kind of thing and fail. Yeah. <laughs> to freaking crickets. Really? And then try it other times and it worked, you know? It's just they're jokes that need to be written on stage to some extent. You have mm-hmm. to find whatever's happening. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, I like Sometimes I love watching Sarah Silverman just because I never know what's going to come out of her pie hole. Yeah. And uh, and then other times I'm like, oh, what's going to happen? So I it's but it is always fascinating. Yeah, it's it, and it's um, it, that's very observational comedy, too, because it's not about her life. It's well, about other some- people. It's about her per- or, or her perception, what, but yes. sometimes she'll come through like her mom, yeah, or like her, you know, or but you're right though, because sometimes she'll just talk about how she'll be walking down the street and she'll see a black guy and then she'll turn it into some weird political statement, yeah, that you're like, oh, that actually isn't okay to say that, <laughs> and uh, and then she'll have a punchline and we'll go, oh, thank God, <laughs> <laughs> which is what my Negro Streets joke was. <laughs> God dang it. Anyway, so but. But yeah, I, 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 there is a certain point in my in my in my notebook right now where I'm like, I don't know what what to write about because I have I have these giant premises that are not either they're too long and they need too much work or I'm just sick of talking about. Them. Yes, yeah, <laughs> and and you know how how to talk about being fifty. And how to talk about, you know, it's, it's, it's not, it, everyone's, you know, every 50 year old's, uh, experience of 50 is different and your, your Sadly, panics yes. are different and mm-hmm. your worries are different. Mm-hmm. Um, and there a, doesn't seem to be, there doesn't seem to be a pattern card. No. With, and especially it, with women. I don't know if there is with guys and the, I mean, because guys, 50 year old guys do the joke about the car and the 25 year old woman and the, that they know. do the life. That's not just a joke. They do that life. Well, yeah. And so, I mean, but it's a pattern that, the, yeah. that enough guys have done that they can make jokes the, about it. Yes, right. And they're yeah. just like, well, I'm going to get a, a Corvette. And oh, they can make fun guy. of the trope. That yeah, they, yeah. Yeah. They have right. that. Right. There isn't one for women. Is there? I don't know. I mean, we're it's, just bitches it, weird, for like, our entire lives. When I was, 
But when I, I was want to talk about that. When I was a kid, like I always thought of a middle aged funny woman was like Irma Bombeck, and I was like, oh, <laughs> like I would rather die than be that. She is she, like if Kathy now, were alive. Yeah, but I don't. <laughs> maybe Irma Bombeck was a badass, and I'm sure she was in her own way. She like, had to I'm be. totally disrespecting her because you know because she was to, like to my be a mom. Success, you know? Right, but, but to be as successful as she was, she had to be one of the yes. most like hardcore women right. out there. Yes. But 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 it's like no, I want to be like Patty Smith. I don't want to be like Irma Bombeck. Like all my my role models, they're not comedic role models because they're not funny, but they're like how to age as a woman on stage are rock stars. It's like oh, wow. Kim Gordon from Sonic Youth or Chrissy Hind or Patty uh Patty Smith, you know? It's it's Janet Jackson even. Although she kind of went I don't know. We'll see, you know, how she okay. turns out. <laughs> she's like on the bubble because she's got such a goofy life, you know? Right. But, but y- y- you know what I mean? Like, or, or Emmy Lou, Emmy Lou Harris, like, uh, Lucinda Williams, where they're sort of older rock or country stars. Yeah. And, you know, they're, they're, they look like old versions of their young selves. Yeah. You know, they haven't uh, completely changed everything. Right. They haven't done a pl- ton of plastic surgery. They just look older. Yep. And, you know, they're still putting out quality. Now, mm-hmm. you know, are 14 year olds going to go see Kim Gordon? Hip one, a couple hip ones will, but, you know, it's, right. it's, it's, yeah. As a comic, though, it's kind of hard to find, there weren't find any. that. You know, that I, well, hmm. my, uh, that is an ex, I wish, I'm not going to disappoint you. I know who most of those names are. Uh, I will never disappoint you when I don't know what the fuck we're talking about. But, right. uh, but the thing is, is I didn't, I don't think I ever had, I don't know that I've ever had any role models. I don't know that I've ever thought all of my, genuinely all of my role models are fictional. Wow. Yeah, they're all in books. Oh, that's so it's sad. it's so <laughs> It's literally oh. but the thing is is it's like that's what I want to it right. was all of my best friends were fictional heroes. Right. And so or I think about authors that I know like Lois McMaster Bujold is a woman who writes a lot of uh, First of science all, fiction. High five for even being able to say that name. Well, how many syllables I in that own motherfucker? All of her books. Okay. And there was a woman named Cage Baker. And but the thing is, is I've only known them in the last ten years. Mm-hmm. And that is when I literally, for me to have science fiction writer women mm-hmm. as my role models of how to be a seventy-year-old is interesting. And sadly, Cage Baker died at fifty-two of a brain aneurysm okay. or brain cancer, and it was very sad. But um, the they're both super what they were because what I all I've ever wanted to be is sort of just sort of a, a smart, powerful woman that's been accepted. And I always think inside I'm super sexy, but that uh, not always. I, I don't know that the world sees me <laughs> in this. Well, well yeah. sh- Shrill is really good. Oh, is You'll it? like Shrill. OK, I just finished um, her chapter on accepting her body and oh, yeah. deciding, you know, I, Deciding that this is my, you know, this is what I'm going to look. This like. is me. This is what I look like, mm-hmm. and I get to decide if I'm sexy. I think, and Amy Schumer kind of said had a similar thing. Yeah, that she said. I think at the Glamour, it wasn't a stand up thing. It was almost, it's it's kind of interesting how Amy will do these like kind of inspirational things. Oh where, right. Where I'm like, you know, for me, my rule is jokes only, just jokes. <laughs> Don't be inspirational. Just right, right. Jokes. But you know, she doesn't give a fuck. And, yeah. And so uh, Lindy West had sort of the same sentiment. Right, but it's like I spent my twenties and maybe my thirties wanting to be liked by guys. Okay, you know, and I think, you know, the the relief of turning forty and then being a mother, it's like, oh, they're not gonna like me. I'm out of <laughs> like if I was even in contention, I am fucking out now. And that's the only that's the thing that's really freed me, um, and and helped my brain, um like focus differently okay. is I'm like, Oh, I'm, I'm out. I'm not in the, you don't pageant. have, you don't have to, you don't have to freak out about it Yeah, as much as you would have in your twenties when you're like, why am I not getting this? Or when, well, how, what can I do? Right. You know how much I was texting you about this podcast last yeah. week's podcast. Like, 
just apply that to guys and yeah. what, he, what they think of me. Right. And not that I had, you know, I, was t- yeah. I don't even text. There wasn't texting back then, but that's right. just, that would just echo on my brain because I wouldn't tell anybody about it. Right. Or I'd, you know, write just frantically in circling. journals and stuff. But, you know, I, so, you know, I, like, I think, oh, Chrissy Hine was never like that. She was always a fucking ass kicker. And I wish I had, you know, started from that place instead of, you know, only come to it like the last decade. Right. Right, but it's so weird because there's no, like, I don't have a, I, I genuinely never knew, like, if I wanted, I, I think I'm a man. Uh, <laughs> because I think, like, when I wanted to get laid when I was on the road, I'd be like, oh, well, just go get laid. See, I call it making love, and that's oh, where we're different. <laughs> when I want to make love on the road. When I want to make love on the road, I get hammered and pick a dude. And then uh, two hours later, I'm like, well, are we going back to the bar? And uh, and he's like, well, that was quick. And I'm like, what, did you want to cuddle? And Because uh, I'm oh, a dick. Shit. Well, you're efficient. I'm very efficient. Very efficient. I, 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 I'm not the hero of that story. Uh, the guys would be... say you are the hero of that story. Well, Every the... guy in America thinks <laughs> the you're the hero. The one guy. Now. You, ironically, are now liked by all guys. <laughs> you have what I wished I had my whole life. Well, the one guy who was like, is that it? Uh, did not like me very much because I was like, yeah, that was that was <laughs> That's it. That's one out of two hundred, Jackie. Come on, <laughs> enjoy the hundred ninety nine that high fived after you. I will left. say this: is that I didn't get laid. It was like I would have to genuinely be. I so horny that I'd be like, fuck it. I'm going to take my life into my own hands wow. and get laid. Yeah, yeah. Because it isn't it isn't particularly safe. It doesn't feel yeah like a good idea. You have to find a condom because mm-hmm. uh, I'm a huge. I mean, I'm the youngest of six. Even when I was like 20. Six or sex? Six. OK. Uh, I was like, oh, I will get pregnant if we do not use birth control. So I always insisted on a condom. And I one of. Guys, you're the hero of this story because I got super drunk, brought a guy back to my room, and uh, where was I? Could have been. Let's go with my not. Uh, so, uh, and I and he didn't have a condom, and I said, "Oh, well, then we can't do it." Did you jerk him off? No, I didn't touch mm. him at all. I told him to leave, mm. and he said, "Oh, I can go to the grocery store and get one." And I was like, "No, nah, I'll be passed out by the time you get back." <laughs> Look, you you know yourself. There's no shame yeah. in that. <laughs> No, there's no shame. There's 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 comedy. There's uh there's comedic. Wow, what a mess. Let's uh <laughs> Hey, Cation, you might not want to <laughs> tell everyone. How are we going to get know, old in this business? How are we going to do it? How are we going to get old in this? That that's that, that is an excellent question because what all I feel like I'm doing is I'm just plugging along, right? Yeah, me too. I've always felt that though. Yeah. I've never felt like there's any end game. Right. Is there an end game? No, I, don't I don't think, think there so. is. And I don't think that there's any First of all, I'm psyched there's no end game in stand-up comedy because then I can keep writing. Right. One of the worst things I've ever seen in my life are, and it's always dudes, just because there's more dudes on the road. Right. But I would meet these dudes who were bitter and uh, about, and they stopped writing. And the only jokes that they would write about filling their gas tanks, you know? And you're like, write something else. Um, do you you remember John Fox, the comedian, right? Yeah. He, he, I never did get to meet him. He um, famously wrote 45 minutes of material and like... 83 and never changed it oh and my god it was really? it would kill and he he got away with that for like 20 years maybe. <laughs> wow like vaudevillian yes you know it's like you, you know almost gotta respect were... it and there were a, some it was joke kind of joke jokes and stuff like that but he yeah. yeah once he 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 figured it out he was done i disapprove <laughs> i disapprove because the thing is is where's the joy in that there's no joy know. in new material well, the joy is so... all in the new material for me yeah right kyle yep there you yes. go. Kyle knows. Some, some people aren't like that, you know? Yeah, I don't know who those those Are those people comics? <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, we don't have to answer it. That's the good news about that us. He, John John Fox, may rest in peace, would say, 17 minutes about your dead parents. Is that comedy? <laughs> well, I uh, talked about what? getting butt-fucked by a firefighter. That, I think that's comedy. That, that was yeah. like his Oh, that was a signature closer? opening. Opener. No, but, yeah, he opened. He opened? Yes! He wrote that in eighty three. That's like, almost good. No, 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 it was something like t- so he would he wouldn't even say hi. He'd be like, so two firefighters are buff. Something like that. It was like it by the time he I came up on comedy, it was so it was almost a hacky <laughs> a reference to talk yeah. about him. His opening yeah. line. Yeah, yeah, but it was oh, something I'm like sure. that. 
But he, yeah, he was filthy and he, and he would crush. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, let's uh, comic of the week. Michelle oh yes, Michelle Buteau. Michelle Michelle Buteau. Yes, <laughs> I knew her in New York. Is she? Did out you here know her? Now? Yes. She's, well, she's out here off and on. I met her in New York. Yeah, she's and, very uh, funny. Very funny, you guys. Yeah. B U T E A U. Yes, that's it. Michelle. Yeah. One L. Michelle. Two L's. Two L's. Uh, she's just hilarious. Yeah, she's uh, super funny. New York comic. Look her up. Yeah, and I think I, I saw her when she started, and then I didn't see her for a while, and then I saw her again. I'm like, fuck, you got good. Yeah, yeah, I love like that pe- when that happens. I love like, that when that happens. Yeah, you see, oh, I see, I see, I see two, what three, 400 spots there. I see yeah. it. Awesome, dude. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's all it takes. Mm-hmm. Just stage time. Yeah. Get up. Anyway, so I'm going to... We we both have uh, we both have sets. We have shows this week in Los Angeles at in Los Angeles. Sixteen. Yeah, I usually tweet it. Mm-hmm. I'll let you know at JackieCasha dot com. It's uh, good times. I think I think we kind of started slow today, then we got in it. We, right? I think we got deep. Yeah, this was a deep one. And now I go home <laughs> to a pouting seventy nine year old. <laughs> well. I thought you were going to say the nine-year-old, but nope, 79-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> the nine-year-old's easier. I'm telling you. Oh, my gosh. Well, I'm going to go home and pack uh, so that I can fly away. Oh, fuck you and your comedy life. My, my comedy life, we're off. Thanks for listening, folks. <laughs> Bye. Now leaving Nerdist.com.